I believe we should start from pleasant things, our sixth session. Professor Mark Lallon is here. Okay. Since he was absent at the first session, Veronatsky Foundation. Vernatsky Foundation is awarding the Order of Vernatsky. He was a co-chair of this, our session, Professor McClellan, Great Britain. Professor McClellan, Great Britain, is awarded with the Order of Vernatsky. He must be somewhere here. Professor McLennan. He's drinking his coffee. Where is he? Is he here? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what to do. What should I do? Okay. So we'll bestow other awards. Dear friends, I wanted to use this opportunity. Oh, he's here. Okay, Professor Mark Lennon. It's for you. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a nice picture with a nice looking lady. I wanted to use this opportunity and on behalf of the Department of Forecasting of Russian Academy of Natural Sciences to give a diploma of honorable, honor, honorable academician of the Russian Academy of Sciences to Professor Herbert Melch, with whom we are familiar for decades already, and who made his greatest contribution in the development of Nikolai Kondratiev theory. And in 1975, in the peak of the crisis, is issued the book entitled Technological Dead End, T Technological Stalemate, technological stalemate uh, Innovations Overcoming Depression. And we have agreed that this book will be published in Russia. We agreed with Professor Alin. Therefore, it is my pleasure to bestow this award Where is the diploma? I wanted to present an award of corresponding member. Where is the certificate? Okay. Has been accepted a long time ago. Alexei Gromov, the, representing the new generation. You are the corresponding member. Thank you. And yesterday, Alexei Igorovich, please take your certificate. Gerhard, this is for you. We have listened to the presentation of great enthusiasts in the field of IP, 
Director of Institute of Standardization and Estimate of Intellectual Property and Business, Boris Leontiev. Is he here? Probably serve to Academy of Globalistics. You serve to the science. Okay, now we move to our session. I have to say that it is dedicated to an issue of paramount importance for the future. I can speak from here or from there. Okay. I'll start with the introduction. I would like to say why this problem is the topic of our session. A couple of days ago we had Kondratiev readings where I have delivered a report, Kondratiev cycles. technological blindness of elite, meaning both world and Russian elite, meaning state and political elite, and business elite, and unfortunately scientific elite as well. Why do I put uh, this issue of strategic blindness so sharply? Those who studied Mar Marx capital and his theory of crisis it's to remember a very important discovery. I believe it's very it's Karl Marx's discovery made with the participation of a practicing capitalist, Friedrich Engels, that the foundation for periodic middle-term crisis is the renewal of uh, the core capital, which is the inside foundation of changes that take place on high levels of development, both in technology and economics. Developing this idea in 1922, Nikolai Kondratiev has published in 1922 and 26, developing uh, the theory of uh, large cycles of long cycles of demand. Following Marx, he came to a discovery that the foundation for the uh, long cycle, long-term cycles, is the renewal of uh, capital, uh, creating new industries and requiring large investment. He also demonstrated that Kondratiev waves have three main components. The beginning of demand cycle is the situation that 10, 20 years prior to a large cycle the wave of scientific discoveries begin, begins. The scientists, that means the scientists are first to react to changes and offer ways out of the crisis, crisis situation. Then the wave of innovation comes. Basis, basic innovations, yes, they we've dis discussed it, and uh, innovations for the era when the two civilizations, when civilization changes other Based on this, the third wave comes, economic wave, the growing wave of uh, large, long, large civilization cycle and large conductive cycle. So this thesis, unfortunately, is the first two parts are neglected by our the uh, political, scientific, business, elite, they forgot the first two si uh, 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 components and they concentrate on the third, on the crisis implants, on poverty, on speculation, uh, speculative uh, mar uh, uh, stock market games, on the uh, changes in virtual economics and uh, uh, the world experts estimated the world um, that virtual economics is three times larger as the GDP, world consolidated GDP. That's a bubble. So the capitalist market has 
come to in its final stage that it's doomed to be substituted by a new economic uh, pattern built on real economics. But in the programs of anti-crisis development and the progress uh, and the programs of Austrian school, Keynesian and neo-Keynesian school, more than neoliberal and liberal schools of thought, unfortunately, this understanding of technological ways out of the crisis is missing. I took part in Rio plus 10, Rio plus 20. I have studied all these documents, technological foundation for sustainable development and as a way out of the crisis is not mentioned, is absent. It also is absent from national programs except for the Chinese program probably because there is the avalanche of both scientific and technological development which I will uh, mention later. This is the theoretic introduction to the subject of this session. Number two, the crisis we currently live in is not a mid, mid, medium-term crisis. It's not just a change of contractive cycles, the change of civilization cycles. It's what's happening in once in every few centuries. Therefore, majority of analytics, practice, uh, practical politicians, when facing this unknown global phenomena, they are unable to understand its essence, nor are they able to determine the strategy to go to get out of this crisis. This is the tragic situation, the growing gap between deep uh, reforms and structural reforms and the understanding of those who make decisions and who prepare uh, decisions for decision makers. So the, ma the main task in the strat in development of strategy of overcoming the crisis is to overcome this neoliberal it has which has been manifested vividly in the policy of international monetary foundation towards uh, southern Europe they don't understand Marx or Kondratiev they didn't don't understand even the case therefore this policy is doomed and millions of people most of all, the uh, new generation suffers from it. You, you see, half of people who grew up in uh, favorable conditions, in conditions of prosperity, who got education and have no work and no future, it's a uh, precondition for an explosion. The new generation can, can hardly understand what's going on, but they are full of anger full of indignation. You see what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Africa, what's going on in Southern Europe. This is a short, near-sighted policy. Blindness of the leaders leads to tragic results in the future and tragic consequences in the future. So our task is that we have to formulate clearly, which we're doing for a few years, international group of scientists in the Institute of Economic Strategy we try to provide foundation for the strategy of getting out of the crisis. The key component of it is the scientific revolution of the 21st century and mastering the sixth technological mode as material embodiment of the change that will take place in uh, manufacturing and will on the wave of innovations will lead to economic growth and social development. Therefore, I believe that the task we have in ahead of us is first to understand the essence and to help others see, to help other po scientists, politicians, and businessmen to understand that the key out of the crisis, the key to transition uh, to sustainable development is in science and technology. I have to say that uh, this revolution is not something that's going to happen. Many people just don't see it, but the revolution is taking place now. It takes place in the er area of science, first of all, in social sciences, where Russia is the center, the group of scientists working on this concept. The academia, uh, the academia we started yesterday. So I have to stress 
knowing this state of world science that we are leaders here but looking realistically in the field of innovation the field of transition to practical definitely china is the leader when i uh, looked at the statistics i was amazed to see the changes taking place in the last 12 years the last 12 years the number of applications for patents in china has grown 16 times 16.4 to be exact in uh, The share of in inventions implemented into in high-tech products testifies uh, indicates China to be the leader in high-tech. 25 to 26 percent of world expert leaving uh, the United States far be behind. China is the leader in chemical production with the most impressive figures, and definitely huge number of people that are involved in this process unfortunately we do not see it neither in Russia nor in other countries the innovative activity is growing very slow also very slow growth in India India is lagging behind in so our task is to see these processes and to understand their future and to do it in such a way as to instill in our programs, in our perspec uh, uh, perspective, in the brains of new generation, to instill the understanding of this factor, so it should be a lead to the rise of uh, the new wave of science scientific revolution, which is taking place now, and to become it will become the foundation of technological revolution of the 21st century. Um be the previous record of the uh, third, third quarter of the 20th century is, an, is not is impossible because the demographic factor and ecological factor will not allow us but to to reach the high tempo high speed of development of this uh, of this technological basis um, uh, feasible to achieve and we have to concentrate on this objective i took a little bit more time uh, the tough time tough time limit you know too many people to want to uh, say say word from this chair so we want to them to reduce their presentations to five to seven m minutes but the floor i want to give the floor to my friend and the classic of the economic sort of the previous decade Professor Gerbert mentioned. Yuri Bolshoi, to be spicy. My body likes it, my mind likes it, and my soul likes it. But what my mind likes particularly about it is that as a member of the natural science department, it gives a wonderful new opportunity to take natural science out of where physics and chemistry is strong, in the geosphere and take it where natural science in biology is strong in the biosphere and take it a step further Vernatsky, Tyler de Chardin, who else said Tyler? My friend said Tyler. And take it into the noosphere where there are processes of thinking and processes of feeling, and I'm very happy about because natural science is the scientific basis for feeling, not only thinking, for feeling. And therefore, 
if this venture here, which is an epochal innovation, that there are people like you and you, there is Askar and Askar, there is Yuri and Yuri, and there is this young man whose wife just left, who the other day over dinner, she knew the new basis for this is bio, this is plasma physics. This is plasma physics as it goes into zero, as our friend Matthew shows it, where the singularities are, and the thinking and feeling about singularities, that needs a scientific basis which is consistent with natural science. Thank you. <laughs> Translator, am I too fast? Too fast? Then I slow down. I have maybe 10 minutes, maybe more, I don't know. I go by the rule, I have 10 minutes. And since I want you to come have the opportunity at least for two questions, I will cut my presentation to eight minutes. So the ninth minute and the tenth minute is for questions. I take two. First, ladies and gentlemen, I shall say what I'm going to say. Secondly, from minute three to eight, I will say it, and in minute eight, in minute eight, thirdly, I'll say what I said. Marxism yesterday. By the way, since you just distracted me, I think one of the greatest Russian heritage is Markov, natural science, process science in Markovian properties, and my friends here and the pioneer in new cyclical Russian <coughs> cyclicism that cannot be understood fully without here being the Russian heritage of Markov processes with linear thinking and all the depth applied to something which is non-linear. So it's not just standing still like that, but it is non-linear in the past coming back to us and it's non-linear in the future and combining that and finding patterns where you are a pioneer in cyclicism and the Askars are pioneers in structuralism, in Russian structuralism. And by the way, since Alex Agedev isn't here, he's the editor-in-chief of this economic strategy, you see in the end this article, five pages, about the plasma physical basis of the kind of thinking when we go from material into immaterial, into intangible. <coughs> and to pay you back, Yuri, because you had the foresight to call the Kondratyev Society the Sorokin Kondratyev Society and Institute. Sorokin is back because in 1927, at the same time when Heisenberg did the thing, at the same time when C.E. Young said the thing about synchronicity, Sorokin wrote the book on social mobility in which he defined social mobility as a special case of social circulation. And if we have to understand anything about civilizational development, it will be circulation of human talents and skills and knowledge and all that. 
you, ladies and gentlemen, find that out there, the Russian heritage and the development of the last 10 years. I'm going to say that. Coming to two pictures, in two pictures, which allow me to phrase an hypothesis, a hypothesis. This is picture one, and it is French structuralism. Now, Aska, you look, because you see the French, they divided the economy into four sectors. First is agriculture and mining, and then came the industrial revolution in sector two and then services in sector three, and then four, the fourth sector, and now comes the fifth sector. Would you turn the picture one up? There it is, the fifth sector, and it is a bunch of innovations that come from the set first sector and from the second sector, innovations from the third sector and innovations from the third sector and the fourth sector, forming a new fifth sector. And we cannot understand the innovation processes, the reform processes that are driven by the fifth sector without recognizing that these innovations originate with people that come from agriculture and mining and from industry and from science. And they are doing something that is demand side, that is pulled by needs. And that is what you Chinese fellows brought to the table here as this innovative part of it. It is need pulled. It is not supply pushed, technology pushed. It is need pulled. And who are, the need, who are the needy people? Our friend from Kenya. If you go a bit further to a Central African Republic, there are 22% of the population younger than 18 years old. Half of the children are children of children. I have three children. I have three grandchildren. They are children of my daughter. She was 35 when the first one came. But children of children in that Central African region, they are children of 13-year-old. If there is no need out there, you're blind. There is a terrific need out there. And therefore, these innovations, these innovations driven by structural shift processes. Structural shift is the landmark word Askar, not Askar Ayeyev. The other Askar used in his book last year on structural dynamics. That is Russian structural change and the hypothesis is I have to look this up, I forgot because I'm so, so passionate, so excited, I forget my hypothesis. It is the hypothesis of hope. And I use three H's because it is the hypothesis of higher hope. Right, Professor Lehman? We come from the Midwest and there we have higher hopes, not just average hope. We have higher hopes. Rising expectations. Which leads me, your word expectation, into the second. Here comes the conjecture, the second hypothesis, the conjecture that in this time and age, in this hiatus, in this period, again, like in history, we have a turbulence, and in this turbulence, there are smaller turbulences and bigger turbulences. But in this turbulence, the breakthrough of the new will come faster than it did in previous periods in history. So what you see there, 
you see there in the middle there are these curves, these there are these speed curves. And the older ones, I have superimposed them here, and the older ones from earlier periods in history, there the speed up is more gradual. And the more we come into modern times, the more radical is the speed up. The more swiftly, the more quickly it happens. Now we go quickly through a number of these pictures because these curves of change, they are based on data about 400 or so processes in history and they are dated and dated in time and in amplitude and you see these dots, they are clustering about power curves that show memory this picture here is about the cluster of 17 processes of innovation which I have studied in my book on the Industrial Revolution. And if one takes the timing and allocates the time at the proper breakthrough time, then the speed curve, in then the temporal relaxation curve in time <coughs> converts into a simple speed curve. That's what this is. Next page. Next picture. So the first curve of that is that on the left hand side and then there are the numbers and the curves that sort of non-linearly fit these bunches which show there is evidence that the, that the bases of these change processes they are strongly patterned. We know since 30 years there's a contrative cycle in there, and there are other forces. Next picture. That's how it looks like in chemistry. That is in the chemical and electrical industries in the 19th century. Could you go back, please? Yeah, and they are there. Diff the point is, if you are disaggregating them, if you go from macro to meso and micro, the fit becomes better. So the more we go away from macro cycles and look into the micro data, that's what Asar did masterfully, as soon as we do that, the fit gets much better to the point that if we go down to the micro where individual processes of innovation take place, our knowledge gets better and better. As a professional, what I do to make a living and to have fun is I'm managing a research group, an innovations research group that looks into these innovations that are now driving the fifth sector. That is micro foundation to the macro science. That's what we do in innovation financing. And the challenge is, the challenge is that most of the pension funds, the public pension funds and the private pension funds they don't understand the innovation processes. Therefore, they think the risk is too high. Therefore, they do not finance innovation. And therefore, your salary and your retirement income and your retirement income is only this because you did not get the return on investment in innovation. If you would have return on investment in innovation factor in, your retirement income may be this high or it may be this high. So on the financial side, we use this knowledge to be more productive with <coughs> money, with our money,
And the sum total of this is that it is expected that with the change in behavior of the pension funds in Japan, in China, in London, in Washington, this will be not only a dream that this reform movement will be something we <coughs> scientists think about. No, the money will get behind it. We skip through these pictures here. There are two more pictures that show the der derivative, the derivative. Yeah, this is the investment. Well, we are in no o science. We are in how investors think and how investors feel about risk and opportunity. And that is highly nonlinear mathematics. So this is a depiction of the feelings and the confidence and the sentiments that are no scientifically based processes. There they are. That's how they look like. Next picture. And they can be quantified. They can be depicted as being smaller and slower and weaker versus bigger, stronger, and something in between. So they are more sustainable over time in how many years a sentiment is standing there and how productive will a strong sentiment be if a collective like us get together and say, let's do something about it. Next picture. So behind it is a multi-valued ambivalent path modeling that differentiates the timing, the seed phase, the start phase. In German we have good expression, we call it Anlaufphase, Vorlaufphase, Zulaufphase, Nachlaufphase. So the words that differentiate the timing is something which is modern physics, isn't it? And there are multiple paths and no sciences to find paths, to find those paths that are feasible. And that is something <coughs> Sorokin told us already in 1927 in social mobility. So, <coughs> as Vladimir Vernatsky said, the future is in our hands. In the biosphere, they call the new branch of science life science. Huh? And in the noosphere, we call the anticipatory processes that have memory, we call them hope science. And it is hope for our <coughs> grandchildren, for the next generation. Third, to wrap it up, the summary and conclusion. I can formulate my hypothesis, the higher hope hypothesis, and the conclusion that the ethical, moral, and other sentiments can be wrapped up, for example, as Christian hope, as Christian, since I'm a Christian, I might as well call it Christian. So for the glory of God, it will come faster, it will be more effective. So going from 7 billion people to 10 billion people need not be catastrophical. It could be that God has something in mind something critical, that 10 million is a threshold for something, 
You and you and you, we haven't even thought about. I bring to you a theorem, a no scientific theorem that wraps up that hypothesis and that wraps up that conjecture. And if you are interested, I show you the math that proves it. I have been given the signal. We have a minute and a half for two questions. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Please ask questions through the microphone, otherwise they may not be interpreted. В микрофон вопросы задавайте, пожалуйста, то их перевести невозможно. Please use the microphone. Thank you. Well, we gave a little more time to the classic. Others will have five to six minutes. The floor goes to Andrei Ostrovsky, Deputy Director of the Russian Academy of Sciences Institute for Far Eastern mm -hmm. Studies. He is specialist in the Chinese studies. And next speaker is Mr. Gromov. I thank the organizer of the conference for giving the opportunity to speak at this conference. Yuri Vladimirovich has already touched partially the issue of technological revolution in China and development of science. In these five to six minutes that I you have allocated to me, I can't say much, but I will just present a brief summary. Uh, within the last few years, the development of science and te technology become the more pronounced factor of success of economic reform than building uh, uh, the prosperity, which in Chinese call, is called Xiao Khan. China, two years ago, has encountered a very serious problem problem of decrease of economically active population. Therefore, China may not uh, look at recruiting a uh, low qualified workforce from uh, the village, from the rural uh, areas. So they have to look for more qualified labor, including uh, labor in agriculture. That means that within the next five years, the China will have to move from extensive forms of development of production to intensive to development of innovative economics that mean that more and more uh, attention will pay to development of science and technology successes are quite tangible china has just launched chan a spaceship which will uh, reach the moon surface and the china will thus be will become the third world power that has uh, uh, sent uh, a uh, spaceship to the moon. Uh, they have launched uh, a man to the sky. They have uh, used um, uh, the Batiska, one of the most, uh, the, one of the fastest computers in the world, Tanhe. The network of speed railroads. Currently, I'd like to mention that. There are two main indicators in China which they pay special attention. The first is share of expenses on ed education in GDP and the share uh, of research allocations in prior to prior development stages. The indicative plans are now including the plans for development of science and research. Allocations for R&D should be more than 2.2 percent, and the number of patents, 3.3 .3 per 10,000 of population. Speaking about the prehistory of science development within the period of reform in China, four large programs of development has been set. 1986, program 863, which set the 
goals for form formation of innovative potential in China in high tech. The next program called for creation of new innovation technologies. Currently in China, there are 556 zones, uh, high tech zones, and 54 centers of innovation services. And in Russia, we have only Skolkovo and Rosnano, as far as I know. Well, that's what we have. 1986, the SPARC program has been adopted to introduce innovations of uh, science and technology into agriculture. And to 1996, the State Committee on Development of China and Techniques had adopted program 1973 specifying areas of agriculture, informa information scientists, uh, health care, uh, production, manufacture of new materials, something that is widely discussed on con this conference on globalization. Therefore, China is going with the times, and Chinese lab, uh, science and uh, research education uh, and technology are looking ahead forward prior the politic uh, the policy has provided tax benefits and financial benefits to the structures from different fiscal sources the companies in who were involved in innovation they got fiscal benefits and finance for import of new technologies from abroad as for motherboards and software, there was a benefit period for when no taxes have been charged and been collected at all. There are three main areas of uh, development of science and technology in the China, energy, water resources, and environmental protection. I'd like to mention the following that uh, within the 20 years, since 1991 to 2011, there was a growth of uh, those employed in R&D uh, 3.5, including uh, engineers and scientists, 3.9, and the share of allocated to R&D are 3.83 percent, but the, the growth, but the China has not reached 2 percent of GDP uh, threshold that has, that has been set. The, the last period, the innovative economy has been rapidly developing in China, and one has to mention such areas as biotechnology, information technology nanotechnology and nanomaterials, uh, atomic energetics, aviation technology, space technology, uh, missile technique, and renewable sources of energy. These are the main areas where we can expect breakthrough in the nearest future on the part of Chinese science and technology. I'd like to mention the following. Zones for high-tech development have been created which are not only generating high-tech uh, innovations, but implementing them in practice and creating high-tech products, which are most bulk of it is exported. Since 2001, the China has occupied the first place in, for the, in the, uh, such indicator as share of uh, high-tech export. Three most developed uh, cities, Beijing, Shanghai, and three most developed pro provinces mentioned by the speaker. Recently, the China comes to a new level of technology due to the rapid development of zones of high tech. Now, please pay attention to the slides. These are China achievements in research and science. This Zhaolong, the sea dragon, Speed railway track Harbin Dalian. In the nearest f future, all provincial centers will be linked, uh, will be connected by high speed uh, railroads from Beijing to Shanghai, four point uh, half hours, like four point half hours, four and a half hours. These are moon photographs, high resolution by satellite Chan uh, 2 and Wuli Chan 3. This is a supercomputer in Xinan. High capacity.
the vaccine to prevent hepatitis E, a new generation of engine, the foray in quantum information, a non-technological university of China, which for the first time in the world was able to link eight photons. Yalan atomic power, Yalan uh, near Shenzhen in, in south of China, new neutrino oscillation, and the last 65 meters radio telescope completed in China's laboratory. These are concrete results, and the last point, nanotechnology is rapidly developing in China five, in five areas, information transfer, biopharmaceuticals, energy resources, environment protection, and functional uh, companies. The analysis show that China, the United States, uh, Japan, and Republic of Korea have highest indicators. Uh, the high, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences, we are the leaders in the number of publications. We are only the first three, but the main prob challenge is that patents are not generated from these publications. And no innovations are resu uh, they're not resulting in innovation. The main thing in China's experience of innovative development is that for 30 years, the China has implemented the scientific policy, uh, developing a long-term and medium-term program of development of science and technology, training of uh, s uh, staff, and increase of allo state allocations uh, to R&D up to 2.5% GDP. Thank you. There was a period when China has actually learned from the Soviet Union. Now, it's, t it's our turn to learn from the Chinese, not only Russia, how to master technolog technological revolution. The floor goes to Alexei Gromov, who has just received a diploma of corresponding member of Academy of Sciences. Mr. Leontiev, please get ready. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. It's a great honor for me to speak in the Hall of the Russian Academy of Sciences, and I would like to present our joint presentation of Institute of Energetic Strategy, which we prepared jointly with Vitaly Bushuyev. This, our institute, is involved in energy strategy and for long-term forecast for long, quite a long time, and we'd like to share the works which were generated by our institute related to structure forecast and future civilization development. I fully agree with the concept presented by Yuri Vladimirovich in the framework of this Congress. The world today is going through painful transition to a new civilization development stage. Next slide, please. I'd like to say that 21st century, it's beginning the beginning of the 21st century, the time of formation of new civilization within the framework of global system. Uh, nature, society, and the man. The core of this system is energetics because it provides e economics, environmental uh, harmonization of relationship in social, natural media with all the due uh, prerequisites for their existence. The uni unity of this based on environment allows us to avoid the opposing humanitarian and uh, man-made factors of uh, natural factors of development. Energy and environment in its unity creates fun base for placing the uh, industry. Close cooperation of experts from both fields allows to define the borders of reasonable pressure on energetics both on the part of the environment and the huge potential of energetics is getting energy from natural sources. Nature is, is the source of renewable energy. Renewable energetics is just the first step towards access to a really renewable source of energy from new media. It's also important to say that in the future, energetics will produce no waste. And the crossing of economics and energetics lies an opportunity to level 
discrepancies in energy between different regions of the world, which will increase energetic security. Also, there are alternative models for sustainable economic development. Environmental science, on the other part, creates definite its own perspectives for economic development, sets a fashion for the development of the renewable source of our energy, which in turn gives impetus to uh, different sectors of uh, energetics and economics. Due to environment, the attention to environmental components uh, uh, affect the development of agriculture and construction industry. The idea of harmony of man and global economic system calls not for the protection of nature from anthropogenic influences, the concept of the past, but a new development meaning efficient use of previously created energetic potential, its renewal and harmonious core development of economics and society, and energetics and society. Energetic interaction within the framework of uh, system, man, nature, society, passes through a series of cri crisis periods this is the focus for the next hundred years. Dynamics of world energy consumption. What are the curves of development? Which points we have passed and which curves we have come to? We are now in the point of 2010 crisis when the further exponential development of the majority of energy potential is no longer possible. So we transfer to a new stage of development of civilization. And here I'd like to share with you structural uh, perceptions of the future global uh, system of the mankind for the few 100 years to come, which we have developed based on the um, also the uh, methods for the analysis of cyclic uh, uh, which was developed in the Institute of Stra Energetic Strategy. It is shown on this slide where we use the approach, we are using the approach of the principle of magnetism, uh, which, uh, the, uh, which is based on the uh, transfer of energy from different uh, state to status to another, which the, ensures the development in economics and uh, materialism and fractal and uh, a little such, and the principles of golden section and cycles of global development from political dawn from the um, from stagnation and decline and in this logics we formulated the civilizational portal of the development of the society of civilization if you wish for the whole 21st century as it's seen from today uh, based on the mythology which is developed in our institute. The distinctive feature of the new civilization, the global approach, is transfer from consumerism to social, natural humanism. When a human being is not acts as a human, as a consumer, but organizer of the harmonious, sustainable um, development of what is done. What you see in this slide is a general attempt to represent the features of the future energetic system, but it is clear even now that the world is changing rapidly and the crisis resonance of the uh, 2010s, it is not the end or um, crisis which is destructing, but it is the beginning of a new fractal of the development of the world ecosystem. This slide shows that the first structure of uh, structural wave of development which is in progress now. It is an industrial renaissance on a new technological bit which is called neo industrial development. The good example of this is the um, United States, which are um, actively using uh, new technologies and new alternative uh, energy energy carriers in order to overcome the crisis the world um, society the world society world communities has found itself recently 
neo industrial development is pushing is the driver of the material production, but it doesn't um, liberate us from the solution to very topical energy problems. Uh, the effect it has on the nature of uh, um, person and the factors which will cause the uh, climate change, which are um, uh, typical for structure for cycles, which uh, bring to uh, scale economic crisis, which will uh, eventually turn eco economy uh, to the declining the carbo carbohydrate economy, and um, in the future we can expect, at the base of the technological development, the in inclination to individualization of the economy, uh, meeting individual needs. But it is not the final point of the civilization uh, development because maximum of meeting the human uh, needs will bring to the consumer crisis because it's impossible no all the time to striving for money material um, consum consumerism and in the second part of this 21st century the world will be moving in this direction the future is for in favor of this no spheric civilization the methodology of which we are studying today, even today at this Congress. Thank you very much. Who is interested in more detail of uh, this concept? It is published in the magazine Partnership of Civilizations. Please address us. We will be happy to answer the questions. This is your medal. Thank you very much. Our young generation of our scientists, you know, has this optimistic note, you know, you see, this example of uh, they also they perceive they accept the approach by uh, um, academician archive the flow goes to the director of institute of stratification Boris Leontiev and the second will be the gen next in on once again good afternoon I will start from the from terms. When our thought is, um, you know, driven by the word social, I want to draw your attention to the fact that biological world is built on the basis of social organization. There is no uh, nothing specifically humane. If you are talking about information society, you are talking about the subjects uh, which. Um, reproduce information. More information is produced by um, actors and and we're talking about intellectual nature, we're talking about the creators. So we want to switch this into the intellectual nature. Intellectual nature is interesting in the respect that it is natural and as if until now in the Academy for Natural um, Sciences, the section of the uh, economic and sociology as a system of humanitarian knowledge. But since uh, there's such notions and an intellectual nature, all this process will have become the natural scientific prerogative of the natural science. This is the importance of this transfer. This is for the beginning. My task today, my objective today, is, is very briefly to tell you about new intellectual economics. Yuri Vladimirovich has mentioned it quite correctly, that the virtual speculative economy uh, works. It does work, but its virtuality and, um, is uh, what? The traditional economy, which has been translated from Western countries, it is two, contains two phases. Uh, financial and material capital are considered. But we are talking about three phases where intellectual capital starts working and the functions of uh, in, economy, in economy of the material and financial capital and fi intellectual capital, they are different. There is great differentiation. Intellectual uh, capital is, um, is the foundation of the system. S a financial capital is motivating or servicing 
and material uh, capital is bringing it all the material essence. If you only leave two types of capital, motivating and um, and what? So we will have this, uh, you know, mix with what we meet in the economic textbooks. Uh, take ten, any ten authors, and you will see that they um, they try not to. Um, reproduce others but if it is a science it must be duplicated it can be there is economy of personality economy of family economic economy of industrial entity economic of an industry a regional economy state economy and international economy global economy if you wish but then the point is if we uh, make this approach from the hierarchical point of view, it so can be modeled very easily. Why? Because um, in the intellectual um, system, there are so-called equivalent equivalent logic. In the theory of ideas, there are three fundamental features of ideas. Uh, Formal, formalization, what is printed, something which is in your consciousness, something which is printed, and thirdly, materialization, uh, how well it can be implementation, degree of implementation. When we use all three features and, um, and see, examine all three, that we, then we see that, in fact, it's a language of nature, of the intellectual nature matter of the space and time is about this. It's about implementations. Time is formalizing because time uh, doesn't exist in in nature. Only, nature only knows cycles. We know um, annual cycles and um, day, day and night cycles. I had a publication in Nauke Jizin magazine. I said that the uh, wise people, um, sages, they looked for um, such cycles. They built these cyclopic uh, uh, buildings to see how the, the sun uh, works according to the third cycle. It's becoming more and more increasingly popular. This equivalent to logic, according to it, the rent intelligent intellectual capital, financial capital, and material capital. Uh, which are the, f the foundation of the economy. What shapes, what forms can it take? The special ideas in our modern theory. There are special theories are called didosphere, systems of knowledge, formalized or materialized or um, whatever you wish. Cyclic ideas, we call them cycloids. There are mathematical curve of cycloid, and there are cycloids. It is what is a cycle, Cyc cyclically in, duplicating in cycle. Economy, economy is all bail, built on cycles. And material ideas materialize effectors. In biology, they are used for at least um, 70 years, but unfortunately, it is not doesn't go further uh, from biology into it. There is an economic, in economy there is efficiency, uh, but there is no source of the effect. Efficiency effect, but, but if no effectors. The, the main effect in our life is the sun, but in the society, the effectors are clever, smart, intelligent, people which reproduce the uh, uh, discoveries, uh, patients in the, in the patents innovation, they're social effectors. The whole microeconomics and management is built on uh, managing effectors. Manager manages effectors, the key faces, the key persons, and on the other hand, in technology, it is the same. Uh, the effectors, the key sources of effects, uh, all those program uh, products, innovations, inventions. So this term 
is adopted to the for six years it has been adopted in the in scientific as a scientific term inventorization of uh, scientific property, intellectual property, to measure and assess intellectual property. Because unless you understand this, you are unable to say which effect is caused by this or that asset. If you don't, you, you don't, there is no inventory of all these effects. You will never know which concrete, which certain asset is intended for what, and on the other hand, what is the effect or the share of effect or um, fraction of effect which it can produce. But the evaluators of the intellectual property are assessing or the um, evaluating this mechanism of inventory of the intellectual property. So two-phase economic economy, which is, exists today, the crisis economy, because on the uh, pseudo effect, uh, effectors, I use derivatives of effectors, when uh, for which American specialists were granted Nobel Prize. And the second reason, tertiary uh, papers or shares when speculative organizations pass papers where there is no intellectual properties, they don't uh, cost anything, but they flood the securities market. And this, which this idea determined this crisis, the time limit is over. In conclusion, I want to say that the modeling through equivalent logic of, uh, of functions of the intellectual property in business in the industry, at the level of the state or inter intergovernmental, it was all published by us. The specialists uh, got familiar with it. The world, uh, those in the world who are interested, the inter institutes uh, of intellectual property, which uh, f is functioning elsewhere in the world, because it is in the a world of politics, intellectual psychology. It went beyond the economy. This institute is the foundation, is the basis of the redistribution and redistribution of all wealth uh, on the planet Earth. If you, we don't understand this, we don't understand anything. John Jen Leon is the next presenter. It's a modern energy of superconducting mobile, re mobile reserve. Is he with us? Is he here? No, he's not. Then the next presenter is uh, Samar Aliyev, deputy director. Now he's in, oh, he's in Armenia. Uh, getting Armenia prepared for the custom union. Then next present is one tier, chairman of the board of directors, Patashim Violet Reis in Changxi province. No, he's not. Oh, is he here? No. He's not here with us. Then uh, Professor Lazareva of the Southern Federal University. We'll be talking about modern specifics of trajectories. Now all the presenters are dissolving from here. Then Professor Kochitov of the Bauman uh, University. Yes, he's here with us. So make your way to the floor. So you can, you can have additional additional minute for all those who are absent. And the, uh, after him will be Valera Abramov, Professor of. Dear colleagues, more precise uh, topic of this presentation is social uh, objective and technological past on a spheric crisis-free development of nations. Do you like the sound of it? I do. The world is uh, in the world. They take place the summer self-regulations of the 
animal and plant world. It is a predator's uh, effect, predatory effect uh, on the population of the world is uh, done by the American uh, economic uh, tycoons. Social contradictions. Can it is something, it's, uh, it's based on the discrepancy between the income uh, between the most wealthy and most poor and the uh, wealth of the country and wealth of the nation. Another contradiction is between the power and subjectives and uh, methods of achieving. The, the objective may be social, but the methods may be really so different. A real economy. Real economics and doesn't define the world. Whatever you watch it on TV or in mass media, on internet, elsewhere, everybody is talking about money, as if all the economists from the whole world try to manage money. Something similar was said by Dmitry Mendeleev in his works that if precious uh, oil is used as fuel it is the same it is the, the same as to feed your stove by you know banknotes american apology, apology to, go to the economic growth mm -hmm. they don't reflect the production one only money uh, so the issue of the product depends on the uh, investment of the labor and on capital uh, we look at the absolutely different uh, econo economy. Uh, this the pro production process is the transfer of resources into, with the help of labor, into production. This is a process that the economy of the world lacks. Yuri Yakovets has justly mentioned that Europeans have forgotten its case and Karl Marx fully ignoring this outstanding scientist. Next poster. No, the previous one. International ideas and the ways of development. We have analyzed 50 national uh, concepts of the countries of the world. They proclaim their national ideas as a slogan which are not formalized mathematically and thus are uh, it's not possible to implement them in practice. Same is true for Russia. Aviation engineer Gary Fulin in, in 2004 has published a brochure, well-being of e e each family and self-realization of each person in the rich country. 10,000 copies have been published, and the end, he writes a concrete fact that the international idea is the individual's happiness based on the family prosperity. The transition to the sixth technological mode, he writes that compulsory general higher education is requested in all countries of the world. As a result of intellectual growth, women in the countries of Asia and Africa will plan the number of kids, and there will be an equilibrium between decreasing number of people on the world and the irrenewable resources. So there will be no be 12 uh, trillion population. In a few, in some time, maybe in half a century, the population growth will reverse. The, the opposite way to the current situation, which is now led by American magnates. Next poster, please. Just a minute. Next, 
no sphere of social development, no sphere, according to Vernadsky, the sphere of intellect, interaction of between society and nature, the borders of which uh, are the er area for man's activity. No, uh, techno technosphere is the sphere created by man uh, as a agglomeration of ways to provide uh, living activity of mankind. Also, the activity of companies, uh, scientific progress is the foundation for technological progress, uh, economic development and social development. Through transition of one technological mode to the next, for example, the sixth technological mode. Therefore, productivity, uh, well, the growth of productivity of labor liberates time for intellectual development of the society. Next poster, please. Next. I have named the idea, a national idea, which is, suits each country of the world, any country of the world. Technological function as is an instrument for its implementation. Therefore, technological function here is presented here at the level of growth of efficiency of new production compared to the previous one. And this growth we can forecast as a normative level, as a number, which shows how agglomerated technical monetary natural indicators, ergonomic indicators, economic indicators. How can you, with this single formula, determine how the efficiency, how, how the efficiency of uh, domestic or foreign manufacturing it will be compared to, com to its competitors? Therefore, we set the norm for development of the country, of an industry, of a company, of a company's division and thus we can select new technologies new products and new manufacturing sites go back below is a general poker function general management function is the sequence of production planning, organization, control, and regulation. The estimate here is uh, uh, E, estimation, R, regulation. Uh, here is a feedback. Let's uh, return to universal decimal classification. It said that organization includes sign scientific and technological preparation of production. The block of regulation is part uh, goes to organization, uh, thus providing feedback and avoiding crisis development. What is sustainability principle? Next poster, yeah, the main, the main cyclic development. No, no, sorry, cyclic development. Cyclic development for provision of cost management forces government to create in the ministries and uh, industry institutions and to support uh, industry-based research, which are currently destroyed all over the country, just as fundamental science. How can we implement our fundamental science when technolo industry technology is killed here? So the leaders of industry are forced to constantly get involved into research and development, thus avoiding technological breaks. Next poster, please. Normative technological function. Technological function based on the discovery of a relationship between socioeconomic parameters of industry it was named against my will. Uh, the 
quantity of technological function which allows to resolve more than 30 different tasks, starting from the individual production section in any country for any type of product, regardless of time of implementation. Here we introduced the index of human potential, which has changed compared to the one suggested by the UN, Com changed uh, including the factor of besides uh, in education level and longevity. There is an index of intellectual development we can borrow from the internet. Therefore, we understand that the intellectual development is the consequences of economical and social development, but we have to make consequences. We have to turn it into a cause. Therefore, we take this cause for the last five years, which are causes for the next period of forecast. For, so show one more. Panacea.ru, you may see it in the internet. Computer system of diagnosis, medical diagnosis for every person. Autotrophic nutrition. Vernadsky said that in order to resolve social issues, we have to approach, what, what do you call it? We have to change nutrition, sources of energy, with the discovery of autotrophic bread, this challenges of hunger and poverty will be resolved, including uh, the pro uh, challenges of violence. They will be eradicated. In, Nosferic, in the section of Nosferic Technologies of Russian Academy of Sciences, which I'm head of, a project has been developed for research of after trophic nutrition, nature, and structure. This is the scientific project number one. It's called Ambrosia. For the first time in the world, a new science is introduced, a new theory of development of all the countries based on social ideas implemented with the technological function. The recommendations are developed for improvement of state management of any nation, any country, and to secure uh, the country to, to management. Any government has to have a special agency, state committee on technology and science, branch ministries, academy of science, independent of the bureaucrats and ministries. Thank you for your attention. The floor goes to Valery Abramov, oh, well, it's presentation we have jointly prepared, the forecast of dynamics of science and technological development, the period of change of technological information cycles. Dear colleagues, thank you very much. I wanted to thank you for an opportunity to present, to make a presentation here. And I would like to continue the discussion, which Professor Gerhard Mensch and Boris Leontiev have started when they spoke about the moving forces for the development of the fifth uh, and sixth technolo uh, technological modes of Nosferic civilization. As it is well known that national treasures of the leading countries of the world are only 5% of them are natural resources, 80% productive capital, and while three quarters are knowledges, skills, intellectual property, and intellectual capital. Therefore, intellectual capital becomes the leading factor of uh, competitive ability. Very briefly, I'd like to show you the results of studies which we have used when preparing of this work ordered by Eurasian Economic Committee. The, uh, 
complete concept of uh, for protection of uh, IP in the countries of the Customs Union and the Eurasian Economic Union. The foundation are the results of studies which have clearly defined, which has clearly defined the uh, ability of contribution to economic indicators in EU and the Eurasian Union, the uh, companies which are intensively using the IP rights. Uh, for those who are interested, it shows that the sources are, this is the source for the report which we used as methodology. I'd like to say very briefly that this study is in part unique because despite a number of claims of contribu contributions of intellectual property towards economic growth, there were no concrete studies of this phenomena. And this is one of the first in the kind. Next slide. This studies clearly show that companies which intensively use the results of innovations provide 26% of employment in EU, European Union. And here the contribution of each object of intellectual property, trademarks, industrial design, patents, copyright. These companies who are extensively using the results of intellectual activity in the European Union, they provide 38, almost 39% of contribution to GDP. The Another important point here is revealed by this study that the companies who actively use IP and innovations pay their employees 41% higher salary than other companies in respective industries. Traditional way of estimate of com uh, compatibility, of competitive ability of economics is their contribution towards international trade. The study has shown that in the structure of products export, uh, imported by EU countries, 98% is our products based on innovation and intellectual property. And the so, so the above was about export. And the products which are imported also contain high share of IP. This is one of uh, the ways of estimate of competitive ability of national economy economies used by the World Economic Forum. Next slide, please. As you all know, dear colleagues, please, next slide. Next one. Next one, please. As you, uh, you all know it, I will not uh, read it. Just next slide, I want to draw your attention to the fact that only two of them business maturity level and its ability to work according to international standards and innovative potential, these two define competitive ability of economics based on knowledge and use of intellectual capital. Based on the results of IP. We believe that from the methodological point of view currently the two above-named approaches are strong analytical and political instrument to achieve high com uh, competitive ability, which is the foundation of, for sustainable development and creation of sustainable competitive advantages in the global civilization. Dear colleagues, thank you for your attention and for the opportunity to speak
before outstanding scientists, world-renowned scientists who define sustainable development of global integrated civilization. Thank you. You are strictly on time. And finally, Professor Krychevsky is here. From his, yeah, he's here. I believe that our soup will not get cold, and we'll finish this session. Transition towards green technological mode through the management of spectrum of technologies. Thank you, Yuri Vladimirovich, dear colleagues, dear friends. Talking about the, at, at the technological session at the Sentinel Sentinel plan about the transition to a healthening of the global ecological uh, environment, we can't not uh, talk about the technologies. The most important if we don't learn how to manage technolo technologies. To, uh, how to ecologize all the technical activities, nothing is going to happen to, to come with. Uh, talking about the uh, certain features of the moment, there is a conference in Tuas where we, we uh, the transition from brown eco economy to green recon economy. In Russia, uh, a, a reform is this progress of the state policy in this respect. Um, year 2013, the year of ecology in this country. Safety Council um, talked about it. And today, the uh, All Russia Congress on the Protection of the Environment is finalizing today. What is said that we are not solving these problems uh, properly, while the understanding of the problem is in place. I will present to you the results of the interdisciplinary uh, research. We have developed a new methodological approach to analysis and assessment of tech techniques and technologies for the. In my opinion, the new view on the technological strata, technological pattern, if, uh, in, in my opinion, technological um, strata can be understood as a domineering mode of uh, interaction between the society and environment. It is the um, cluster of technologies. It is eco eco ecological technological strata uh, status. In new paradigm of the green development, Rio plus 20, in the newest history of science, we're talking about uh, the beginning of the transition to the green uh, technologies. The, um, oh, well, the transition to green technological, green um, energetics, green transportation, the green for the green future. There is an initiative for green economy. We are now living in the brown economy. Of course, I must apologize for the similarity to the substrate. So we are in. The sub substrate is uh, ecologically, ecologically dirty. For transition from the old brown and dirty to new clean um, green, we have to um, exercise the massive transfer to green ecology eco technologies. The new methodological approach is based on three things new eco approach to ecological it is uh, nano bio it is absolutely senseless in the in terms of in the context of uh housing of the environment new uh classification of techniques and technologies for classes can f brown and green economies uh, green and uh, black and white can be added to these two. And the third point is the model of assessment model in, in the coordinates of the uh, consuming uh, con uh, consumation and um, consuming. On this page, we see we 
In this matrix, we see the um, polluting, consuming, renewal resources. We have to, we see, identify four areas, black and appropriate area. Next is uh, brown, uh, where we are now, the green uh, area, which we are getting closer and closer, moving or uh, pushing the green technologies, modeling the resources and minimizing the um, refuse and white is is our final objective the uh, boundaries between these uh, technologies between these uh, modes can change with time criteria of eco ecological criteria of the boundaries between the classes of technologies uh, with implementation with the progressing increasing implementation of green technologies can change but we have to analyze the spectral analysis of the existing technologies ensures the um, identi um, identification of uh, green technologies we have to refuse the decline black technologies black and to minimize brown technologies uh, stimulate green and to strive for white this is the logic on the underlying logic of the project i will skip the details to save some time for the di for dinner for lunch analysis of the rocket uh, rocket industries and technologies uh, we are talking about china and russia if carers of the uh, rocket carers, uh, the fuels used there, then uh, gept Geptile is uh, over toxic technologies. They're black technologies, they should be banned. Uh, brown technologies are kerosene and oxygen. It's a mess, a mess technologies on uh, the best of the, uh, of the affordable. Of course, they're still dirty. Uh, green is uh, hydrogen and water energetics, and white is a principle in you. Rocket free electromagnetic technology, cool, or whatever, like from this. Next slide, please. Push the button, please, will you? It's, the, it's time. The green process is embracing everything, but the analysis of the assessment of the innovative technology, it is the most important step. We are not analyzing the spectrum of technologies. We are not uh, worshiping these um, uh, this modes, but they, are not cor they don't correspond with the ecologic environment. How, how we shall uh, ev um, evolve? in his uh, some uh, of the technologies by lamb uh, we have talk about the compromise the feasible technologies green technologies with minimum pollution and minimum consumption of energy consumption why we should norm uh, analyze and norm in order to manage the inherited technologies the best of the existing technologies and the green technology uh, since 2010, uh, 2000, more than 2,000 patents for the green ecologies, steam technologies were registered in the world, the majority in the United States, and rather than in the BRICS countries. And next slide, please. In European countries, for example, it's in uh, legally normed the best technologies. We are we are behind it at for at least 20 years, and our business is breaking this process. Uh, though our leaders, our authorities are trying to implement them. the market for the innovative technologies will uh, reach the four trillion rubles or grow 10 times in two, 20 years. So I will skip all these, uh, right. We can come to the conclusion that we uh, in prevailing this uh, type of technologies are black and brown. What can be done? So the Russian proverb says that the black dog cannot be washed to become white. We must manage this the transition from one economic mode to another, banning ba black technologies that should be blacklists of banned technologies. 
uh, so this label is as non and it says we have to absolutely strictly distinguish between black, brown, green technologies. There's the black technologies, they're being banned by law and uh, we restrict brown technologies, providing a time limit for them, motivate the and stimulate the implementation of green and develop uh, white technologies. Necessary indicators and the income, income. We have to develop the criteria, standards, indicated proportions, and to implement them into all the industries. Organize the process of green uh, technologies through managing existing technologies. The objective is to transition to all green new ecologic mode. How from green dreams we can switch to through green policy, green law standards, and to, to green uh, economy and green society, a green future. There is uh, the <coughs> next, next, next slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for everybody for all the pres all the presenters. We listen to many different approaches. The problem is uh, um, calls for more and more work to be done. I want to draw attention to this is a very absolutely unique uh, book which contains the pre forecast for the period up to 20 2050 in the world and in Russia. And it, for the first time, it is given in the in the um, in terms of civilization cycles and the world and Eurasian technologies. I wish you good lunch. We've worked a lot of successful work. Thank you all for active participation and bon appetit.